So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's session. I am Bhavesh from the Swift Enterprise product management team, and it's uh, good to see all of you here joining in for this session. While we hope all of you are safe and healthy during these tough times, we are trying to do our best to ease your project management struggles by continuously delivering you capabilities that will empower you to drive agile transformation journeys in your organizations. So some housekeeping before we get started, I'd like to assure that the webinar is being recorded and it will be made available to all those who have registered for the session. We'll also be uploading it on our Digital YouTube channel. So you can also subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel to get regular updates on our products and also watch some of the insightful webinars uh, we continue to have with our leading industry practitioners. Also, we would love to hear from you today. So if you have any questions or feedback for any of the features that we are going to go over today, then please uh, use the Q&A section to submit them. We'll certainly take those up towards the end of the session. So today we'll be essentially looking at the new Agile program dashboard capability that we have released in 7.5 version. It helps you monitor the progress of your Agile programs effectively, and it provides you key insights on how the program is progressing in terms of the scope and timeline commitments. And it also provides visibility of the distribution of different work types and team members to help you assess ways to mitigate any slippage risk. We have also enhanced the accuracy of monitoring the progress of your cards on the value stream. Uh, along with this, we have uh, also released uh, dependency capabilities as part of our previous releases. We will also have a quick look at this and also go over some of the usability announcements that allow you to do more with ease. So with that, let me uh, first set the context. While we have delivered the Agile program dashboard in this version, I'd like to take a minute to quickly go over the Agile program management capabilities that we had released uh, in the past uh, three or four versions. So first up, I would like to highlight is how the new hierarchy visualization has allowed you to build team epic and user story hierarchy inside a project. But with this new hierarchy capability, you not only get a great visualization of that hierarchy, but you are also able to build that hierarchy across projects. So you could uh, have a model wherein you are having themes inside a program, your epics inside a product management project, and you have certain uh, user stories or technical stories or any of the actionable items that are going to get delivered as part of release and sprint inside a, a different development project altogether. So all this is getting linked as part of the hierarchy visualization. Not only that you are getting this visualization, you are also seeing the overall progress that each of these items are making at the individual level. So you'll see that the person progress icon on each of these cards, as well as uh, the higher level cards are present. That gives you a glimpse of how the overall uh, work is progressing at each of these levels. Now, how is this work progress getting computed? For this, what you have done is, we have introduced a whole set of preferences that will allow you to set them for individual work item types. So for example, for a theme, you would like the progress to be based on the number of cards or number of epics that have been completed under it. Similarly, for a user story, you would want to have the person progress based on the number of to-dos completed or number of uh, hours that are uh, remaining for that card. So there, these are the ways in which uh, the progress can get computed automatically on different uh, types of cards, be it theme, epic, or user stories, or technical stories. And if in case, if you're wanting to have a free hand on how you would like to update uh, the progress, we have also provided the manual option. Now, while these options are available for the card, please note that this option has also been given in such a manner that you can also track the card person complete as well as the child card person complete independently. Now that gives you great amount of visibility. So for example, I would want my theme uh, person progress to be updated manually, but as a 
as a reference i would like to know how many of the epics have been completed so far so my child person complete would be based on the number of child cards that have been completed but i will have a final say on how much amount of work that needs to be conveyed as completed for that given theme so these are the ways in which you can track progress effectively across work item types across hierarchy levels and finally you are also able to visualize this progress on the execution board itself up until now you have been utilizing the execution board to see how the cards are progressing on the value stream from left to right now we have taken that same paradigm and we have introduced a percentage progress scale so now that we have a percent progress getting tracked for all your important themes and epics you can also visualize this in a percent progress manner so as the cards continue to make progress these cards will continue to shift automatically towards 100% and finally into that done column so this is a quick visualization that your managers or program managers can make use of when they are just wanting to look at progress at a very high level now these are the ways in which we have built the capabilities for our agile program management uh, in this release we felt that the next step is to be able to track all this work and also monitor the progress in the dimensions that we are typically inclined to look for any work that needs to be assessed or as per on track so we have introduced a dashboard which has a whole new set of widgets that help you look at different dimensions of those work be it in terms of size be it in terms of uh, the progress it has made or what what is the amount of work that is pending and whether that work uh, is going to get completed on time all that gets uh, visualized as part of the dashboard visualization so let me switch over to the application now okay so what i've done is i've opened up my agile program management dashboard now this is how it looks up the first time that you open up the agile program dashboard you will see that the timeline widget is the main widget uh, along with this you will see a predicted date uh, visualization a team distribution uh, as per their location and how the work is getting distributed in terms of type and size now these are the different widgets that are available along with that on the top you have the impact metrics so that you can quickly uh, know if things are going as for the plan if if there is something that needs to be assessed as well so these impact metrics will always remain uh, on top as far as you are looking at all these widgets together now let's look at each of these uh, widgets uh, one by one but before that the, i'll just quickly uh, go over how the filter uh, criteria is also available for the entire dashboard so typically you would want to know uh, for any of your parent work items be it a theme or an epic how things are progressing so you we have given an option wherein you can go ahead and make a selection of the card type if you have created a custom card type like objectives or uh, would want to stick to theme and epics all those uh, options are available as card types as long as it has hierarchical information below it you will be able to visualize it uh, and see their progress in these different dimension as part of the widget the other aspect or uh, other way to look at uh, how things are uh, progressing is based on the delivery cadence so you can make uh, a selection of a release or a sprint and still look at all these aspects based on selected release now i have selected one of the themes here uh, you have complete uh, flexibility to select any of the themes uh, which are part of this project uh, in order to assess how things uh, are progressing so uh, i have selected uh, theme 3 in this case and let me just expand and view the timeline visualization now the timeline visualization is essentially a, a enhanced scan chart that is going to uh, help you uh, track the progress of the work items based on different aspects be it in terms of actual progress that they are making or if there is going to be any slippage all those questions can get easily answered while you are looking at this timeline widget so by default uh, you will see that the theme uh, and the next level of the hierarchy items are available and the visualization or the gan bars are also present on the right hand side now what you will notice is that for each of the item you are seeing two bars one for the planned duration and the other for the actual progress that the work item has made so far 
So for now, what uh, we are looking at is we have given a plan start and a plan finish date for our theme. Uh, that could be the case if we are uh, planned out how, when things should start and end for a given theme or a given work item. But that may not be the case always. So for that reason, what we have also ensured is that if in case you are just sure about by which date you need to start or which date you need uh, need to end, even that visualization has been covered as part of it. So in this case, the Epic 2 has only the plan end date. We are sure it needs to be completed by 30th of August. Similarly, this one only had a planned start date and we wanted to ensure that work kicks off on this on 1st of September. So this kind of visualization is available for all the items. In fact, if you don't even have planned dates, you will see a legend like this not planned and you can still continue to track it. Now th that is with respect to the planned dates. Of course, we introduce a couple of fields, plan start and plan finish on the agile work items so that you can go ahead and provide the necessary dates for all of your work items that you're wanting to plan against. Now the person progress here is still coming out based on the person progress preference that we had chosen. So just as we saw earlier, for each of the card types, you can have a person progress selected. So in this case, we are highlighting that this person progress in this case for the theme is based on the child person complete. So the number of epics that have been completed for this theme, those are going to contribute towards completion of theme and will display the person progress based on that. So till date, the person progress has been 84%. What we have also gone ahead and done is whenever the progress made by an item is more than 25%, we use that to extrapolate and identify what would be the date by when it will get done by. So in this case, if it has taken uh, about three months, uh, three and a half months for the item to get completed 84%, so for the remaining 16%, how much an amount of time will be required or how many days will be required for it to get completed? So we are deriving the predicted end date in that manner and we are showing that as well as part of the visualization here. So the plan date is 20 November and the predicted end is 29th November if the team continues to work at this rate. Now, this is uh, where you are going to see the date and the percent uh, slippage that may happen if the team continues to work as per that. On similar lines, you will be able to see the person progress or the slippage that may be the case for other items as well. Now, while this is the visualization you have for your theme and epic uh, progress, you could also further want to drill down and look at some of the items that you had planned for this epic. So in this case, I have a bunch of user stories that have been planned uh, as part of this epic. Now, some of them have been completed, some of them have uh, slipped, and some of them have uh, yet to begin. So work has not started on them as well. Now, in all these cases, what you will notice is that uh, you are seeing a plan bar, but generally team members may not uh, go ahead and plan uh, by when they will start a particular user story or end it. So what we are doing here is that based on the sprints that they are tagged to, we will derive the plan duration as per that. Uh, if there is no sprint tag, only release tag, the plan duration will be as per the release date. And if uh, neither of them are present, uh, of course, then we would uh, need you to provide the plan dates. Now, absence of a planned start date or end date, providing you a slippage percentage or uh, the predicted end date would be difficult. So in that case, what we are doing is we are simply not showing you any slippage because there is no planned end date that has been provided for that work item. But apart from that, you will still be able to see the progress as uh, as the work items are making uh, based on the person progress. Now, while the preference is contributing to the percentage progress that you are seeing on these items, what we are also done is try to make this more accurate in terms of how the actual start gets derived for all, for all these items. So actual start can be based on either the earliest timesheet actual start date for that work item, or it could be uh, the date by which it has moved into an in progress column. So one of the enhancements that we have done as part of the 7.5 version is that 
now we have given you a ability to classify the columns on your uh, value stream board as ready in progress waiting and done so the moment you move a card into in progress that will be considered as the work item has started and the work has started on it so if in case you are tracking purely based on the movement of the card on the board and not uh, essentially relying on timesheet actual effort you will still be able to derive an actual start and the person progress will get computed based on the preference setting so we have uh, given further flexibility as well as more accuracy on when a item should be considered as started uh, in terms of uh, the actual progress that has been displayed here now uh, one of the things that you will also notice is that since i have work items across projects in this case the epic and user story are part of different projects i have also seen a legend on top wherein I can easily identify the blue dot refers to the items which belong to Acme development and the green dots belong to the items which belong to Acme product management. So you will also get a quick classification of which item belongs to which project here. And if in case you are still wanting to see more details about the item, you can always click on the uh, bars here and it will open up the details view of the work item. So that uh, capability also exists you can look at the other details of the work item here as well now this with respect to the timeline progress in detail view the moment i switch and make some other widget as the main visualization a mini version of it will be available uh, as part of the four widgets on your right hand side so while i was looking at the timeline visualization earlier i have collapsed it into its smaller version and now made the predicted date of completion as my main widget so i'm looking at the progress summary here again and now it is showing me progress summary only for the theme that i've selected as part of the top uh, filtering criteria so it is showing me that uh, the plan duration was of uh, 1st of august uh, it was supposed to start on 1st of august and the actual progress bar is also showing uh, accordingly so in this case it seems it probably just started on 2nd or 3rd of august based on which it has moved slightly ahead you are still seeing the percentage slippage uh, as you are seeing there and the overall progress as well so 84 percent progress has been made and eight percent slippage is what we are seeing and the predicted end date is uh, 28th november so that's the overall uh, progress summary that you are seeing here as part of the mini version of the timeline visualization now we have gone on to and looked at the predicted date of completion now predicted date of completion is the next step once you have looked at which are the items as part of the timeline visualization that you saw needs further understanding on how you need to mitigate it if they are slipping now here i get to see for that item the current velocity which is the number of cards that have been uh, closed uh, on a daily basis and then uh, considering the plan finish date for this theme what should be the required velocity or the number of cards closed on a daily basis in order to avoid any slippage so that i see that as 1.09 uh, at this point of time similarly if there is any slippage going to happen i'm seeing that here and the predicted end date as well now please note the predicted end date uh, is all these metrics that you're seeing on top are purely getting computed based on child person complete. So in this case, you are seeing that the number of cards that have been added on a steady basis on from 1st of August till the current date, those have been increasing. So you know how the scope for the given theme has been increasing. At the same time, you are looking at the closure of the scope as well so the scope added and the scope completed is visible to you on a daily basis here as well and to highlight what is going to be the spillover percentage or the spillover uh, in terms of the scope so you can look at the scope spillover here which is six cards and the timeline spillover which is uh, the number of days by which you will end up completing this so in this case my plan finished was 20th November and it will get done by 30th of November. So that is the overall visualization that you get as part of the predicted date completion widget. Again, a very crisp visualization to know 
uh, what is the requ uh, required velocity and a possible spillover and how uh, if team continues at the current rate what is the predicted date of completion so all that information is available as impact metrics on the top as well as as a graphical uh, chart here below so that was with respect to the number of uh, the, the number of days by when the theme will get completed so now that you know this is the rate at which work needs to get completed to avoid spillover we have provided you a few widgets that will help you correlate what kind of work that you have and if there is something that you could reprioritize so one is the overall work type distribution widget so here you will quickly get to know what kind of work is getting uh, packed as part of this theme so you will get to see the user stories technical stories uh, and epics and the other visualization that we have is that of the cards the actual items uh, which are part of this theme so here as part of this theme i could see that there are uh, five epics and each of these epics have several cards and based on the estimated points that have been given for these cards you will see a, a card size for each of them represented in this manner so you can quickly identify which are the big ones which are the small ones and probably uh, deliberate over if there are any cards that you could probably reprioritize for that uh, the scope gets completed uh, as planned so quite few big cards so the atst 12 uh, which is the payment gateway int uh, integration card uh, that uh, is comparatively a bigger card similarly for this one third party configuration for the first time so you could uh, hover over any of these cards or even click on them to view the details of the card and still decide what are the cards you may want to still reprioritize based on the type of work which is present or even the size of work which is present so these are the couple of uh, widgets uh, which will help you understand the work distribution the other uh, option that we have here is of team distribution so often uh, having a co-located team or team working together in the same time zone helps so we have given a team distribution based on their geographic location so here you will get to see how the team members which are working on this theme be it as a card owner or a to-do owner how they are distributed across the globe and if there is any scope for you to have them on uh, the same side so that they can have better synchronization or plan their work accordingly as you can see the team distribution one is also a, a sort of a heat map chart uh, based on the number of team members which are located in each of the countries you will see that uh, heat map of across the map getting highlighted and on similar way you will uh, have a quick globe visualization as well which shows you how many people are spread across how many locations so that is uh, what we had for the agile program dashboard as i was saying this gives you a quick a visualization not only through the impact metrics which are available on the top but also with the individual widgets that you have you are able to get an understanding of how the work is progressing in terms of the timeline commitments how work is getting completed uh, and at what rate it needs to complete for you to avoid the spillover and what are the different ways you could probably replan things or reprioritize uh, work based on the different kinds of work that you have, be it in terms of the work item type or size of the work items or the overall distribution of the team that is available across the globe. So these are the ways you could possibly look at how the uh, theme is progressing. While this is a view visualization that is giving you a uh, in, with respect to a theme or an epic we also have as i said earlier a visualization that helps you look at it in terms of delivery cadence so in here i have selected a release instead of uh, any of the work item types and you will get to say the overall progress in similar manner so for each of the sprints and uh, the release that i've selected you will see a person progress bar uh, for the individual release and sprints and the way in which the person progress gets computed is it's it's basically based on the person progress of the individual items so 
uh, release uh, or sprint do not have any preferences at, as such it is directly getting derived as the person progress across the items which are tagged to it and you are able to see how it is averaging out to the person progress that you are seeing on the top so here too you will get a similar visualization and the same is applicable across all the widgets as well so depending upon what you choose whether it is a card type or a release you will be able to see uh, all these visualizations uh, as well based on be it predicted date team distribution work uh, distribution uh, one thing i wanted to just touch upon is that the the indicators that you are seeing for the impact metrics on the top here is it is based on the previous day uh, values for these metrics so the current velocity uh, what was the value uh, yesterday and how it has increased by 0.03 percent today similar required velocity has dropped by 0.6 percent today and similarly for spillover card so that's just a quick comparison on how uh, the overall metric has progressed uh, since the past day if there has been any change there So this is uh, the overall agile program dashboard that we have offered as part of the 7.5 release uh, Currently we have kept it in the beta mode There are a few things that we would still like to improve upon in terms of certain uh, UI aspects as well as we are wanting to look and hear from you uh, What kind of feedback that you have for us so that we are able to improve upon those areas and finally give you the uh, complete version So that was with respect to the agile program dashboard another uh, key capability that we had introduced as part of our previous versions is that of dependency view so let me just go to that one now so up until now you had different ways at looking at the links that are present on your cards so one way is, as we saw earlier is that of the parent child links where you are able to see the theme epic and user story relationship the traditional links uh, which we have had for ages was the traceability links and now we have introduced a new dependency links that is going to help you look out for the dependent cards so this again is inside your work uh, item vis uh, visualization that you have uh, so along with the parent child links on the top uh, and the traceability links you have a new option Called dependency for your agile work items now what this does is it gives you a visual of how the other cards are having a dependency on this ticket in this uh, in this case so you are able to see this matrix uh, based on the work type uh, laid out on the x-axis and the card owners laid out on the y-axis so you are quickly able to visualize how these cards are dependent on each other so for example this ticket uh, which is with respect to upgrading the setup to the new wildfly version now while this is a ticket which maybe a it uh, team member would be looking at but once he goes to this dependency view he not only knows that why this is important but it also helps him understand how it is going to affect the progress of other items as well so in this case there are a couple of technical stories uh, being worked upon by emma and rick uh, which are dependent on this ticket to get completed so that they can do the next level work as well on it similarly uh, there is a user story which ben is working on which is relying on this ticket to get done so that he can do uh, or complete the necessary changes uh, which are uh, required uh, for him to publish as part of that user story now while you are able to see these dependency links getting created you are also seeing that, that these have been color coded as well so how is this color code coming up so what we have done is based on the due dates that each of these cards have we have given them this uh, red and green indicated colors so if my ticket due date is going past my technical stories or the user stories due date that link will show up in red so that's a simple dependency that you could establish across work item types generally it is uh, something where you will want to work upon on your own but you have something uh, else that is going to be required in order to finish that work so that's why you will see this kind of dependency links getting up, uh, established across work items 
Of course, the way to go about doing this is uh, it is all part of the overflow menu. You can select a predecessor or a successor card, uh, which is part uh, of this dependency network. And uh, just like you add a hierarchy link uh, as a child work item or a parent work item, in this case, you are seeing uh, links for adding a predecessor or successor work item. Uh, also, similarly, you will have a list view. So in this case, uh, I have multiple cards which are dependent on my card. So I see all of them uh, under successes. Uh, they are depending on my card to get completed. So that's the uh, list of cards uh, which are categorized as the successor cards. Currently, I have, don't have any predecessors for this card as well. So that is the list view that we have and the zoom levels are also available in case you have many more dependencies uh, for a card. But uh, the expected uh, way in which you would want to go ahead and use this is have dependency on items which are independent in their own respective ways, but just are required for completing your work. So only in these cases you should go ahead and create these kind of dependency links. So that was with respect to uh, the Agile Program Management dashboard and the new dependency visualization that we had created. Uh, we have also done a whole lot of usability enhancements as well. So what we have uh, recently done is one of the key areas that we worked upon is that we have given you a way to classify the columns on the board as a ready in progress waiting and done. But users were still not wanting to close the card because what it would mean is that a close card will go away from the execution board. That's the current behavior that we had. And in effect, we were unable to capture the true end date or the true completion date of that card because you always had that card open. Even if the work had happened or completed way before, you would still keep it open just because the execution board only displayed the open cards. So in order to address that need, what we have done is we have ensured that once you have closed the card, even then the card will be visible on the execution board. Uh, there is no reason for you to not indicate that this work has been completed just because the card uh, will not be visible on the board. So that's one of the ways in which we have um, mitigated that problem. Also, uh, the visualization is clear enough so that you know that this is one of the closed cards and you wouldn't be able to perform the other typical actions that you have for an open card, such as moving the card from one column to another. So once the card has been closed, you will uh, see it in this manner. Also, what we have done is if you are classified a column as done type of column and you move cards into a done type of column, all those cards will also get closed automatically. So you wouldn't have to go about closing the cards one by one. You simply have to drag and drop them into the done type of column and they will uh, be prompted for closure. Once it is confirmed, those cards will also get closed and uh, be present in the done column. So essentially, any column that you have classified as done type of column will be uh, having only closed cards in them. So that's one enhancement that uh, we have made on with respect to improving the accuracy of when the work actually is getting completed. Apart from that, uh, we have also done is that uh, if you have been using external systems to update the cards which are present on the board or would like to bring them onto the board, we have opened that up via the XLS import and web services. So if you are using any integration or relying on other systems to update the data in Swift Enterprise, you can make use of the XLS import or web services. And also one of the enhancements that we had done in one of, uh, one of our past releases was to ensure that if you are switching from your backlog refinement board into the uh, sprint planning mode for execution, you will be prompted if you would like to move the cards onto the board directly. So there is no reason for you to go ahead and explicitly perform an additional step to bring the cards onto the board. So if you are using our backlog refinement board for planning your sprints, this will really come in handy because those, those will automatically pull up the cards and add them onto the execution board. 
So that is what all we had uh, as part of the session today. What we would like to do right now is uh, open it up for Q&A and see if we can answer some of the questions. Just to clarify, this is uh, certainly not customization. The Agile program dashboard that you saw, it is one of the features. It simply needs to be enabled separately. So that is the reason I uh, requested you to get in touch with the SPOC or uh, your account manager so that you can try it out on your uh, setup. So, uh, if in case you are still having any questions or feedback for the feature that we demonstrated today, please feel free to get in touch with us. As I said, uh, one of the main reasons why we are still keeping it in beta is so that you can give it a try, see where things uh, can be improved upon, and let us know so that we can try and uh, get that in place before you uh, get it as a full uh, non-beta version. So we are definitely wanting to hear from you on that. All right, so it looks like we don't have any more questions today. Uh, so I'd like to thank all for those who have joined today. Please feel free to get back to us in case there are any open questions and feedback. That's all we had for the session today. Thank you.